You are listening to the Anna Brandt Podcast for the year 2022. Anna Brandt has been a professional photographer for over 23 years and has taught worldwide in over 34 countries and continues to educate in person and online. My name is Ava Brandt and I am happy to welcome you to the fourth season of my mom's podcast channel. We hope you subscribe and stick around. Hi, everyone. This is Anna Brandt, and welcome to another edition on my podcast channel. Previously, I've talked about how I got started in newborn photography, but many times, almost every single day, somebody sends me a message, an email, a DM, something that says, how do I get started in newborn photography? The people that ask could be as young as 16 years of age, even less to way into the retirement years looking for something else to do. Doesn't there's really no age when it comes to the creative process or photography. That's what's so great about it. You it's never too late to start and it's never too early to start. All of my kids are very comfortable in with the camera and they all do their own photo sessions all the time. Years ago, I taught them all how to shoot manual. Funny story, we were in Japan and I believe this was over 5 6 years ago. I don't even know now and we were in an aquarium and don't ask me why I decided to teach them then. I think it was just they all had cameras and they were all trying to shoot in the dark and they were just all asking me a million questions. And so we had like a little mini photography lesson and I taught them all how to really understand the manual functions in a camera. And so I believe that you can truly start at any age, but I also wanted to kind of go over kind of some of the ways of how do you just, you know, how do you get started in newborn photography? In my workshops, I have people that are from the wedding world and they'll be switching over to the newborns. So they'll say, well, I've been doing weddings my whole career, but my brides, they really love me. And so now they're asking me to photograph their newborns and I don't know what to do. Or I get people that say, well, I'm already shooting, you know, seniors or quinceaneras or events and I want to transition over to the newborn world. You know, people come from all different walks of life, but when people need to learn newborn photography, we're going to specifically talk about newborn photography today in regards to training. They just don't know where to start. And it is a little tricky because you are dealing with the youngest human beings on the planet. I've been a newborn photographer for 23 years and I started before I had children. I went pro about a year and a half before I got pregnant myself. And I didn't know what I was doing. Now, I was comfortable with babies and children. I started babysitting in the church nursery at 12 years of age. So I had been holding babies. You know, I was Aunt Anna when I went pro. You know, I had nieces and nephews. I was very comfortable holding babies. I do get people in my workshops that have never even held a newborn before. And I get many people that have never wrapped a baby or even photographed a baby. One of the most common questions I get is, do I need experience to attend an in-person newborn workshop? shop. I always say, of course not, because it's not about what you know, it's about what I know. I actually don't mind it at all when I'm somebody that's brand new, that's never touched a newborn, wrapped a newborn, held a newborn, and they're coming to a newborn workshop. I'm completely fine with that. The reason is, is because I would much rather you see it in person and understand all the nuances of newborn photography and watch someone hold the baby and learn about all the safety concerns before you hold the baby. Now, that's not a big percentage. Maybe that's 25%. The other 75% maybe started on their own, maybe they had children of their own. And I wouldn't say that they're 100% comfortable with holding a baby. Even those who come in that have children of their own, they may say, well, I can hold my child, but I'm not quite sure how to hold the baby for wrapping. Of course, the number one concern is always safety, 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 safety. You're dealing with, gosh, babies four days, five days, seven days, eight days, 10 days, you name it. Babies that may not be born perfect, that may have different, you know, different physical limitations. You you need to understand, you know, for example, the head is heavier than the rest of the body. So putting a baby in a bucket requires that that bucket be weighted or the baby's going to fall right over. You know, babies have reflexes. They can roll, they can jump up. So you don't want to leave a baby unattended because they could literally roll right off that beanbag. There's a million things that you need to know. And so I do understand that can, it can be very intimidating to just jump into newborn photography. 
every single day, somebody will message me and say, okay, I want to really learn about newborn photography. I've been watching YouTube and I've been watching as much as I can, but exactly how do I start? What camera do I buy? What classes do I have to take a class or can I just learn online? The past couple of workshops that I've attended as an instructor, when I look around the room with eight or nine people, I'm amazed that maybe six out of the eight have only learned online before attended my in-person workshops. Now, again, you don't need to attend an in-person workshop to attend an in-person workshop. So when I say six out of eight have only learned online, I just find it fascinating that there are people that will go out and start a newborn business only learning online, and they're doing a pretty good job of it. When it comes to what camera do I buy, this is is the hardest question to me. I literally receive this question almost every single day. And I will say, I can't answer that question. Well, tell me. And they just, people will just keep asking and asking and asking. For me personally, I use a 5D Mark IV with a Canon lens, 24 to 70 USM II lens. Now, I have other lenses. I have 50, 35. I believe I had 85 at one time. I think I gave my son my 70 to 200. I've had many different cameras and lenses over the years. For me now, I use the Mark IV and the 24 to 70 US M2 every single session. Does that mean I haven't used anything else? Of course not. I used macro lenses for years. I've used prime lenses. The reason I use that combination now is I'm comfortable with it. Now, when my Mark IV dies and falls apart in my lap and my backup one doesn't work anymore and it's time to upgrade, I will. But I'm not one of those people who upgrades really quickly. I don't really need, give me a reason to upgrade. If my camera's not working correctly, if it's not focusing, that's the reason to upgrade. And there have been times, I remember when I was on the Mark III with USM one lens for 24 to 70. And I felt like my images weren't sharp and I felt like they were grainy and I had my camera checked and my lens checked. And basically it was just time for an upgrade. And so I upgraded. So, you know, if it's one thing, if you can't get the range that you need in your camera, or if you find it's grainy or it's just not sharp enough and you've got it checked and it's fine. And, you know, the person you're getting it checked from is saying, maybe it's just time to upgrade. Maybe it's just an outdated camera then upgrade. But it really depends on your budget. I ask Alex, every time someone asks me what camera to buy, I say, Alex, tell me what camera. And he says, I can't say that. You know, there's Sony, there's Fuji, there's Canon, there's Nikon. Alex always says, and Alex is my videographer and the producer of this podcast channel. He always says, buy the best full frame camera that you can afford. Now, people may say, what is full frame? There's full frame and crop sensor. Crop sensor cameras are going to be less expensive than full frame cameras for sure. A crop sensor camera means that when you're looking through the camera, you're not going to get the full image that you're looking at. Okay, it's going to crop. Now, I use Canon. I like Canon. I make jokes all the time about Nikon, but it's just I don't use Nikon. I use Canon. I think that Canon is fantastic for working with the skin. I think it's just a great portrait camera. Some people swear by Nikon. You know, I don't really, I can't really tell you what camera to get. I have others that swear by, you know, Sony and Fuji. I do recommend testing them out, renting them. That's what I tell my son. Every time he wants to buy a new camera, I tell them, go rent a camera and test it out. That would be my biggest advice. Rent a camera, rent a Nikon, rent a Canon, get a model, test it, try it out and see what you like and then see what you can afford. Because it's impossible for me to tell you what camera to buy. Now there's mirrorless. So I could say, go buy mirrorless. But I don't know anything about mirrorless because I don't have one. And when I do, it's going to be a learning curve for me and I'm going to have to figure out how to use it. At the end of the day, if you want to be a photographer, you need a camera, buy one used, test it. And then as you grow, trust me, you're going to quickly see what you need and what you don't need. Now, let's go back to where do you start with newborn photography? Obviously, you want to immerse yourself in the world. You know, you could research, how do I get started on newborn photography? And you'll find blogs probably from me because I've done interviews and blogs and podcasts all over the world. You may stumble upon my YouTube channel. You may stumble upon other creators and innovators. There's tons of people out there teaching newborn photography. My YouTube channel, you can go to annabrantvideos.com or search Anna Brandt on YouTube and you'll find tons and tons and tons of videos. And that's great to learn, but it's not going to come 
kind of give you everything you need to know. I did self-publish a book, A Newborn Photography, and it's over 200 pages. It lists supplies. It has lighting diagrams. It has tons of information in there. And I tell people all the time, remember back in the day, we used to go buy books on subjects that we'd need to learn from? You buy a book, honest to God, that's where I'd start. If someone handed me a book on newborn photography, I'd be super excited because I could make notes. I could highlight it. I could do all the research and the equipment that I suggest. You can do it for others. Go to Amazon. My book is not on Amazon. You can find my book anywhere, annabrandonline.com. There's links on my website, annabrandonline.com, and in my store, bellybabywear.com. You can search Anna Brandt newborn photography book. But even if you were to go into Amazon and sh- you know search on newborn photography, you'll find other books. So sit down and read a book. That to me is great because you can make notes, you can highlight, you can put stickies and see what you need. Whether you're going to shoot natural light or studio light is a whole other ball game. You need to first understand about newborns and read about it and decide, are you going to do this in your home? Or are you going to do a studio? If you're already you know, a working photographer and you already have a studio and the lights, then you need to understand, okay, what are the basic props that I need? How do I get started? One of the things I tell people all the time is go to my online school. I have a school, bellybabyschool.com, over 50 courses in there. There's a fantastic course, how to be a baby photographer, because that's another question people ask me. Okay, I'm in your online courses. Which class is the best class to do? That one, how to be a baby photographer. If you want to learn how to do newborn photography, that course is a very inclusive course. It has all of the basic information that's needed. And to me, if you sat and looked at that course, it would tell you everything else that you need to know and where to go from there. So if you can't jump to an in-person course right away, I would say go online. Now, if you say, but I wanna, I wanna take a class, I wanna take a class right now, great. Go to annabranteducation.com and you can see that I teach all over the world. I have now taught in over 35 countries. Now, I have different types of workshops and I'm gonna explain what those are. So for online learning, you can go to bellybabyschool.com. It's learn on demand, which means that you can sign up for a course and immediately have access to it and you can log in anytime around the world whenever you would like. There are some courses that when you take them online have a start and an end date. That's different than a learn on demand. Learned on demand means you would just sign up and you can learn immediately. Years ago, I taught on creativelive.com and we would be live for a few days and then you could always purchase the course and watch it later. Bellybabyschool.com is a little bit like that, except I'm not live. It's all recorded content and you can watch it as you wish. Now, in person, gosh, I have... I believe over 10 different types of in-person learning. It's hard to believe. All of these have evolved over the years because I've been teaching over 13, 14 years now. And so, you know, when I first taught, it was just kind of basic, you know, photography. And I've taught photography 101 courses and all different types of courses. As the years have gone, I've kind of perfected the training because I know what people are looking for and what they need. The very first basic and affordable course is baby clinics. They're four-hour clinics, that's it. And the four hours goes by very fast. Hardly anyone even goes to the bathroom. And I do all of the posing. I show the direction. I go over the settings for the camera. I set up the baby. So you can see we focus on some core concepts, working on the beanbag, working in buckets and working in bowls. I also make sure that I show wrapping and transitions and the lighting. I work with a single light. I use Pro Photo Shoot Through Umbrella. And so I show my lighting, my settings, but regardless of what modifier you're using on your light, whether you have a bounce back, whether you're using a soft box, I'm showing you the direction of the light, the settings of the light, what settings for your camera, how I pose the baby, how I wrap the baby. You also take pictures. So what's great is you leave with images that you can use for your portfolio and you should leave with a pretty good basic understanding. Now, people will say, well, can I share those images for marketing? Of course you can. And then other people will say, well, no, you shouldn't because if you can't reproduce the image, you shouldn't share that image. Well, I'm I'm not your babysitter. We feel like sharing the image for marketing. You've got to get models in and practice your craft. Go for it. 
So the clinics, a lot of people take clinics because they're only four hours, especially if you have kids and you only have a few hours to get away. It's a great way to kind of understand the concepts, meet other people. I've had people take four clinics in one year easily. I think the most I had was four or five taken in one year by a student. And sometimes people will come back a year or two later because they want a refresher. Sometimes people are very comfortable with the camera, very comfortable with, you know, their business, and they just need to kind of understand some key details. That's where the clinic comes in. I have people that are brand new in the clinic. I've had as young as 16 years old in the clinic, and I think as as up to 75 years of age. So it really, it's just a great way to be inspired and see what I'm doing is the clinic. The club, the baby club are hands-on and there are five hours. And the reason we did the club is because people wanted hands-on. They wanted something that, okay, they've done a clinic, but now they need to wrap the baby. They need to touch the baby. They need to feel how to put the baby in a bucket. So that's where you come up with the baby club. It's five hours and it's only three to one, meaning there's only three photographers and one teacher, myself. Because it's only a three to one, almost every single time I list a baby club, they sell out within 24 to 48 hours. And I don't even know if we have any open clubs right now. You can go to annabrandeducation.com and see if there's any open clubs. We also have baby boot camp. It's one step further from the club. Instead of five hours, it's eight hours. And it's a little bigger class and it's hands-on throughout the day. And the boot camp is so that you have an entire day immersed with others in a hands-on environment. You have the Belly Baby Club, which is a low-cost workshop, large volume. So meaning you're going to have a much bigger group, whereas the clinics are only eight people, the clubs are only three people. The Belly Baby Club is less expensive and it's a large group environment, which means that there will be more people. That's why it's less expensive. It's not hands-on, but it's a great way to meet others and just be inspired. And if you need portfolio work, I'm doing all the posing and setting up. That's a great workshop to do. In addition, it is maternity and newborn in one day. So a lot of people come to the Belly Baby Club for many, many reasons. They want to add to their portfolio since it's pregnancy newborn. They want to meet others, get out of their house, and they've been to previous workshops and they want to just hone their skills. Or they've never been to a workshop. This is a lower cost. It gives them a good introduction to my teaching style. Many will then go on to sign on to other workshops after that. Now, we have the Baby Academy. The Baby Academy is my most intense program. It's a four-day academy, and it's based on newborn immersion over four days. What that means is every single day, we are going to come in and start working with newborns straight through to lunch. Many of the days we have newborns in the afternoon as well. We go over marketing, business, pricing. There's homework every night. We have a student dinner. We've had field trips, craft nights. It is spending four days with 10 other photographers that are trying to take their business to the next level. It is a program for those who really kind of want to kickstart their business or take their business at a much higher elevated level and just go for it. I've had people open up studios within months after being in a baby academy. I've had other people quit their day jobs. People gone from zero to they've fast tracked. Sometimes they've fast tracked people that have been doing it around for three or four or five years. So if you talk to any of my academy students, they'll tell you it's more of a fast track. It's an immersion. It's, listen, is this something you want to do? Every single day you come in, we can talk about the day before. We can do homework. We can talk about the business, marketing, building baby plans, focusing on baby, children, family. It's the most intense program I know in the world for those who are trying to master their craft in newborn photography. And I don't know of any other program on the market like it. Now, we also have master classes. Master classes are maternity and newborn in one. Usually half the day is spent on newborn, half the day is spent on maternity. They're much faster paced. We are transitioning a lot. We're working pretty quickly. Uh, again, it's an immersion type of day. If you want to jump in and get to work, and it's not as big of a group as a belly baby club, which is also maternity and newborn, master classes are only 10 people. And we're assuming that you're comfortable with your camera, you're comfortable comfortable with the settings and you really want to dive into maternity and newborn, that's the master class. As you can see, many students go from learning online 
jumping to either a clinic, which is four hours, or a belly baby club, low cost, full day. And then many will say, oh, I need an academy. I just want to go all in. Or let me do a few more clinics, maybe get some hands on and go from there. We also do retreats. Many of our retreats are for those that have done academies and clinics and clubs and they've met friends along the way. A lot of friends are returning students and they just want to be motivated. They want to be inspired and retreats. We have a retreat in Laguna, which is by the beach. We have one in Costa Rica in the new year. It's outside. We, you know, go on a little adventures and it's, it's a retreat. Retreats are meant to renew your mind and your spirit and get your passion going. And they're a little bit more personal, focused on personal and business goals. And if you need something to really kind of get you out of the rut or just be inspired, I'll, I think all of my workshops are inspiring, but sometimes the retreat gives you a little bit more. Now, we do have something called the summit, where the summit is something that we bring in other industry leaders and teachers together for a weekend. So it's not just my teaching. All of these other workshops that I've mentioned are just, I'm the only teacher. When it's the summit, we ran three summits, two in California, one in New York, where we closed Belly Baby and Beyond with Ann Geddes as our keynote speaker. We brought back Belly Baby Summit this past year in California, and we had several other speakers come and teach for weekend. And it's it's just great fun to get out of the house, mingle with other photographers, and learn from industry leaders. As you can see, there is a ton of different ways to learn. If none of those apply to you, some people will do in-person mentoring, one-to-one mentoring. I do one-to-one mentoring online through Skype as well as in-person. In person means that we need to just sit down in person, whether it's your studio or mine, and work on just the details that you need to work on. There's no other students. That's why it's called one-to-one. It's just me and you. Sometimes we're working on marketing. Sometimes we're working on pricing. Sometimes we're doing shoots. Maybe it's wrapping. But whenever I'm doing one-to-one mentoring, it's so that I can work directly just with the photographer, nobody else, and we can focus on your key personal issues. Lastly, we have a new program that we're doing called the Baby Lab. And the Baby Lab is all new, and right now it's currently only available in my studio in California. And the idea is that I know that there are a lot of students that I've had taught over the years that say, well, I need more practice with babies and they're going to do a model call and they need to bring babies in, but they're still kind of struggling. Maybe they're still kind of struggling in workflow or beanbag and they don't really need a whole workshop or they can't really afford a whole workshop. The baby lab, you can check in for four hours, work with just a couple of other photographers because there is a limit on photographers, have my direction. I'm here in the studio and get to work using my lights, my props. We bring in models for you and you're basically just kind of, it's a lab. You're coming in using our availability, our services, our models to kind of build your portfolio and fine tune. Now it's not a class. so I'm not going to sit here and teach you. And when you're coming in for the lab, we'll talk about some of the things that you want to do. And if you're sharing the lab with other photographers, we can do usually about two setups with just no more than six photographers and you can kind of work with each other and take turns and help each other kind of pose work with the baby again with my direction and my guidance. So it's just a great way to get more experience without having to pay the price of a class while understanding what you need to fine tune and pose newborns. We have them for newborns and sitters, and those are brand new. All of these you can find at annabrandeducation.com. So where do you start with newborn photography? Well, you need a camera, right? We discussed that. Get a camera and understand how to use your camera. I do shoot in manual. And if you don't understand how to use your camera or how to shoot in manual, there's a million YouTube videos out there that you can do. And I also have classes that show you how to do this at bellybabyschool.com. I also teach a photography 101 course that helps you learn how to use your camera as well. I do recommend, as I've said, buying books and watching as many videos as you can to just 
really familiar yourself many times with just on sometimes the terminology. From there, you definitely should attend an in-person workshop because I do believe that in-person is the best way to learn for anything. You can see the process. You can see how I'm holding a baby. You can understand the safety concerns. You can see where the light hits. And you get to leave with wonderful marketable images. Where do you go from those in-person workshops? You get models and you practice and you keep honing your craft. Whether you've just started out, you're brand new, you've been around a while, you need experience and you need to work with baby models. So get some friends, get some family, you know, do some model calls and try to get some experience, but don't try to do everything with one model. One model isn't going to do everything that you need. If you're bringing a newborn model in, you know, bring them in and maybe just focus on wrapping one day. And then maybe another day focus on working in the bowl. And then another day, maybe bucket. Don't try to do, you know, a seven hour session with one baby and drive the parent crazy and exhaust the baby. Too many times when people are doing model calls, that's what they try to do. They bring a baby in and they, oh, they have an outfit and they have a bucket and they have a bed and they have a bean bag. And six hours later, the baby's not settled and the baby's exhausted and mom's tired. And you don't even know if you have any images that you can give to that model. You know, we have a new service called bellybabymodels.com where you can subscribe and we can do a model search for you and get you some models. One of the things I tell the photographers in this program is have a defined model call. Sit down and write down the objectives. What do you want to achieve? Maybe it's you want to master your lighting, maybe master your wrapping, maybe today you're going to work on beanbag, maybe you're going to work on siblings, family, but don't try to do everything in one model call. Write it out, write it down, and then communicate with your model the parent and say, this is what I think I'm going to try to do. Even when my models come in and I'm recording for classes, I'll say, okay, I'm going to try to achieve this and this. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And sometimes I may say, okay, well today this baby's just going to do this. With that being said, I also have an online university called Baby University. It's at babyuniversityedu.com. It's based on six week tracks where every week we deliver new content based on the different types of tracks, business, marketing, posing, families, etc. And we are constantly delivering new content for the summer tracks and we have fall tracks coming as well. That the university is like a school, but it has a start and an end date with student assessments and evaluations along the way. However you learn, whether it's in your home, with others, listening, watching videos, the point is it's an ongoing process. It's not finite. It's not that there's going to be that one course that's going to make you the most amazing amazing baby photographer in the world. There's never one course, one teacher. You may learn from me and five other different types of teachers. I think that you should learn from more than one baby photographer. So you can pick some from this teacher, some from that teacher, and then hone and create your own style. If nothing else, you want to make sure that you do little by little and just continue to grow. I'm 23 years in, you guys, and I'm still growing and still learning. I still try to get new ideas, inspire myself, and find ways to inspire the clients that hire me to photograph their babies. People ask if I still take clients. Of course I do. I have a very busy studio here in Tustin, California, and I am shooting all the time. When I'm not traveling, I'm here. My studio is open Tuesday through Friday. I do have very limited weekend availability, and it's usually closed on Sunday and Monday. I only take newborns in the morning because that is when I feel that they are their best. We do not photograph newborns in the afternoon unless it's for training purposes. Newborns are best first thing in the morning, especially most babies. They've been up all night. That 8.30, 9 o'clock slot, usually after they've had some food, they go into an absolute beautiful sleep. Many times my clients come in at 8, 8.30 in the morning and they're done by 10.30, by 11 o'clock. They can go have lunch. So understand who newborns are. They're the youngest, tiniest, most beautiful human beings in the world. And we have to make sure that we have all of the knowledge so that we are equipped to take care of them. It is a privilege every single time a parent brings their brand new baby into your space. If you treat it as a privilege and understand the safety that goes along with it and learn the tools that you need to capture those amazing images, I believe that you can have a very long baby career. Whatever your goal is to be a hobbyist, to be a pro, to be the best photographer on the planet, never stop learning and always grow. I'm Anna Brandt. Thanks for listening. Did you like this podcast? 
We would love it if you gave my mom a kind review and reach out to her. To learn more about Anna, visit AnnaBrandt.com. You can find out about her education opportunities at AnnaBrandtEducation.com.